So here we have a XB2, X-Ray XB2 gear diff all laid out, and we're going to build this up. It's pretty much the same process for most of the gear diffs. They all pretty much work on the same principle. We've got all the items here. The first thing you want to make sure on is when you look at the plastic parts, particularly the gears, because they come out of these sprues, make sure there's no burrs on them, particularly around here. If there is, then you just need to just uh, take them off. Obviously, your gearbox or your diff will not run smooth. That is very important. But the quality of parts now, it's very rarely a problem. They just break off these sprues and it's not really a problem. So our first step is to put the O-ring into here. Now, this provides the seal. Now, in the manual, you recommend using a little bit of oil. What I like to use whenever I'm seating O-rings is Team Associated do a green slime. Uh, not much of it. Just a small amount of it on the o-ring, I find, just helps seat it. Not much at all. Just smear that round. And that just goes in there. The next task is you need to pass this through there. Now, to do that, they recommend put a little bit of oil on there. We'll use the diff oil. And it's important when you do this that you put some oil on here because otherwise you will scratch the o-ring that we've just put in and if you do that then you'll always get a leaking diff and it's the same when you do your shock absorber as well so just pass that through there like that then we have this washer to go on there like there the next stage is we just need to put this pin through there like so and then the diff gear just sits on there you see there's a groove on the back of it which sits on there like that just check that moves around freely so then we move on to this stage again just check there's no burrs on that i've already just put the rubber in there and i've used again this green slime just to seat it pass the axle through again we'll just put a little bit of oil on that Washer then goes on the back, like so. Make sure that's pushed all the way down. Now getting the pin in here is slightly more tricky because you've got more depth. What you need to do you need to make sure you line it up into one of those uh, recesses there. There we go, just have to do that off camera, make it a bit easier. And then here we have our gear. Check there's no burrs on it, which there isn't. And that then just pushes on there. And that spins around nicely like that. We then have our smaller gears. Now you can run two gears or four gears. If you run two gears, you'll need to change the oil more often. I'm gonna build it up as per the book with four gears. Very simple process this. Each gear just goes on there like that with one of these washers on the side. So what we do now, we need to locate this set of gears into here. Now you can see the cross pins locate into there like that. And that is pretty much the diff built up. We just now need to got to fill it with oil. Now in the manual, it gives you a particular weight. This apparently should weigh, certainly in the X-ray manual, they're telling me this weighs 11.92 grams and I've got to put 1.3 grams of oil in it. So we'll weigh that up off camera and see where that ends up. Generally, I've found if you just cover the cross pins, that's usually about right. Weighing is obviously very accurate, but when you rebuild this diff, of course it will still never get it completely dry unless you really, really clean it well. So you're never gonna have a base weight to work from. So it's not handy to know by eye how much you need to put in. So we've filled the diff with oil. We're happy with that. As you can see, it's just about covered the diff pins or the cross pin in there. You'll find when you fill it up, it does crown a bit in the middle, but once you work, you can work it around by turning the output shaft and it will drop down. It will drop down once the diff starts to work anyway. Now, simple process now of just closing the diff case up. We've got the paper gasket. As you can see, it actually comes, this one comes without the holes pushed out. They are punched, just not pushed out. So we just need to remove them. Make sure that doesn't disappear into my uh, diff because that will affect the performance. And make sure you don't tear this. If you tear this, it's game over really. And if you get a problem with your diff leaking, 
the chances are the problems will be this gaff paper gasket or your plastic parts particularly probably this part you probably either over tightened and deformed it so that's usually the, the, the problem so we put the diff top on like that I'm just gonna hold it tight and just work it that feels nice and smooth and then we've got these one and a half mil bolts to tighten up and close the diff case up when you tighten these up you want to tighten them up in a cross pattern and don't over tighten them and that is one diff built up you can work it fair it feels nice and smooth and that is job done we'll just put the bearings on and that's going to be ready to go in the car in the next steps so thanks for watching stay tuned